right, boys and girls. So today we're gonna to be talking about making connections in a procedural text. So let's go ahead and get started by going over our I can statements. So I can explain the procedures to describe a technical text. I can describe the sequential and cause and effect connections between steps in a procedure and a technical step. And our focus standard for this video is RI 2.3, describe the connection between steps in a technical procedure in a text. So what is a procedural text? Well, a procedural text is going to be a recipe or some sort of science experiment, and it's going to give you some steps that you need to follow in order to perform the recipe or in order to cook the recipe or perform of an experiment. So we have steps in a process. So a step of actions to do or directions to make or do something. We also, in a recipe or even at school, you have to follow directions. So directions are a, are a set of steps that explain how to do or make something. And oftentimes in a procedural text, we'll be describing or to tell what something is like or to explain something. So for example, think about slime. How would slime feel? Like, would it be pointy? Would it be squishy? I mean. You're using words to describe how something tastes in a recipe as well. All right, and then we have cause and effect. Cause and effect is when one thing happens to another thing. So your clue words in your text would be because, so, as a result, due to, if, then, and since. So for example, looking at this first picture, there is a ton of rain. If it's raining all day and all night, what's going to end up happening? Well, the streets are going to be flooding, are flood. So because of all the rain, the streets will begin to flood. And then of course, in a procedural text, you will have a sequence. So a sequence is the order in which events in a story or steps in a procedure of a cure. So if you're thinking about making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, well, the first thing you do is you take out your bread, the next thing you do is you smear your peanut butter on one side of the bread, and then you smear the butter on uh, the jelly on the other side of the bread. And then finally you put your sandwich together and then you're able to eat your sandwich. So those are a sequence. There are steps, first, next, and last. Okay, and speaking of making something super yummy and delicious, let's talk about brownies. So in this text, it is listing out the steps to making brownies. And I am going to use the key details, those important pieces of information to list out the steps in my own words. So I want you to follow along and watch me as I do this. So it says brownies. Brownies are a very fun and yummy snack to make. When making brownies, get ready to make a mess. First, you mix the brownie mix, eggs, and oil in a bowl. When it is all stirred together, you pour the brownies into a large pan. It is important to make sure it is all mixed up or it will not cook right or taste very good. After, set the oven timer and put, in, put it into the oven for the amount of time it says on the brownie box. When they are done, check the brownies with a toothpick. If the toothpick comes out clean, that means they are fully cooked. Let them cool before you cut them into pieces. Okay. So now that I've read my story, I'm going to go through my story and I'm going to decide what are the steps of the procedure. So what's the first thing I need to do? What's step two? What's step three? And then what is step four? So I'm going to take out my highlighter and I'm going to highlight some key words. So for example, first right here, that is not my highlighter. Let me redo that. There we go. First. First is going to help me identify what is step one. So it's, and it also tells me the starting point of where my steps of procedure is going to be in my text. So it says, first, you will mix brownie mix, eggs, and oil into the bowl. When it is all stirred together, you can pour the brownies into a large pan. So the first step is to mix all of the ingredients together. And then I'm going to pour the brownies into a large can. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight pour since that's my verb. All right. And then after I'm going to set an oven timer and put it in the oven for the amount of time that it says when the brownies are done. All right. And then when the brownies are done, I need to 
check them with a toothpick and then I need to make sure that they cool. So for my first step, I'm going to write in my own words using those key details, mix the brownie mix eggs and oil together. And then for step two, I'm gonna say pour mix into a large pan. All right. And then for step three, I'm gonna say put pan in oven, then set a timer, okay? And then for step four, I'm gonna say check if brownies are done. and allow them to cool. Leave that last one in. Okay, so basically I took this story with the recipe on how to cook brownies and I'm putting it in my own words. So let's see if it makes sense. So it says, step one, mix the brownie mix, eggs and oil together. Step two, pour the mix into a large pan Step three, put the pan in the oven, then set a timer. And then step four, check if the brownies are done and then allow them to cool. So yes, looking back at my text and what I have said, the steps that I have written down does make sense in the order that I put them. So I would be able to cook brownies if I wanted to by following this recipe, okay? Now let's talk about cause and effect. So remember cause and effect is what happens because of something else that happened. So let's look at these questions. And this first question says, what would happen if the final step was left out? Well, if the final step was left out, which was checking on the brownies with a toothpick and making sure that they're cool, if I did not check if they were cool, if I did not check the brownies if they were done, well, it could go either one of two ways. One, my brownies could be raw if I pull them out of the oven and they're not finished and that would not be safe for me to eat. Or two, if I just let them check, continue to cook in the oven and never check on them, they could burn. And then I have a chance of burning my brownies and possibly even burning my house down. So it's really important to check to make sure that the brownies are done before I pull them out of the oven. All right, and then the second question is, what would happen if the first step was left out? Well, if I did not put all my ingredients together and I just put the brownie mix into the oven, then I would just have cooked brownie mix powder. It would not turn into brownies if I didn't mix the eggs in the oil in there. So I wouldn't have brownies that would be what would happen if the first step was left out. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for watching today's video. And hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to read a procedural text and how to put the steps into order and a little bit more about cause and effect. Happy reading, boys and girls. See you next time.